Thank you, Mary Jane, and thank you all for coming out here today. Much better weather than we had in uh, January when we tried to do this last time. Um, we're very excited about these two new awards uh, that the coalition is uh, putting out this year, and particularly excited uh, about the recipients of them. Um, so let me get right to it uh, and talk first about uh, our first New England First Amendment Coalition's Freedom of Information Award which is given annually to a New England journalist, not for just one story, uh, but for a body of work that protects or advances the public's right to know under federal or state law. And the fascinating thing about looking at Don Stakeham from the Hartford Current and the body of work that he's done over the last couple of years, uh, revealing uh, corruption and uh, misconduct among the New Britain, Connecticut police force is that his stories really speak largely for themselves. And I'll take you through some of those headlines in a second, but let me first tell you a little bit about Don's full story and why we saw fit uh, to honor him with this award. Don's a reporter for the Hartford Current uh, in Hartford, Connecticut, where he covers transportation uh, as well as the cities of New Britain and Bristol. The Current has been extensively exploring misconduct within the New Britain, Connecticut Police Department for more than two years now. The city of New Britain last year spent thousands of dollars for outside counsel and dozens of hours of staff attorney time to keep the most explosive parts of the information that Don uncovered to try to keep it secret. But the current relentlessly pursued two cases through the months long complaint process at the Connecticut uh, Freedom of Information Commission. And they prevailed both times after full scale hearings. Through his determined use of Connecticut's Freedom of Information Law, Don helped the current uncover the following incidents and issues that the $95,000 a year captain of professional standards had sex with women while on duty repeatedly over a period of years and lied to police investigators when he was confronted about it. That city officials gave him a payout of more than $100,000 and his full pension after behind the scenes negotiations to push him into retirement. That a sergeant who ran a special unit to stop rowdy partying near a college campus was reprimanded after trying to improperly intervene on behalf of a female student who was charged with underage drinking. They wrote that police later determined that that same sergeant was guilty of serious misconduct and possibly a felony for misusing the state's online crime data system to check the background of a man he suspected was dating his wife. He was allowed to retire shortly before a disciplinary hearing was to be held. They also reported that less than two years after the city paid out $200,000 in the case of a man who hanged himself in a badly designed jail, the police department came dangerously close to a second cell block hanging. And the chief and mayor had been warned but had made no corrections. They reported that top New Britain officials directed a nearby town's detective to stop investigating after he concluded that the New Britain police chief's son had stolen city property and auctioned it off on eBay. Wow. They reported that the city attorney's office was enmeshed in a web of conflicting interests, handling personnel complaints against the chief and his top commanders, while simultaneously defending them against federal sex discrimination lawsuits brought by female officers. One city lawyer actually refused to release a female officer's internal file, complaint file, for more than a year, proclaiming that he was defending that officer's right to privacy. The State Freedom of Information Commission, when they were approached by the current, which forced the issue, ordered the document released, and it showed that her complaint was directed against, guess who? the lawyer himself, accusing him of offensive behavior, sexual harassment, and slander. The current coverage kept public light on all of those cases and others. 
During 2012, the embattled chief retired under pressure and the city appointed a reform administration. On the night before a long-awaited Freedom of Information hearing, the mayor's office capitulated and abruptly released dozens of pages of previously secret documents. But it redacted details too freely and the current ended up ended spending much of the rest of the year pursuing one of those cases with the state commission. Because the first problem is getting the documents. The second problem is getting all those nasty redactions taken away, as so many of you know here. I think the best testament to the work that Don and the current did in this is seen if you just look at the headlines of the stories themselves. And I printed out a bunch of them this morning. January 29, 2012. Settlement includes $105,000 payout. Besieged captain will also get a $51,000 annual pension. You read into the story, the current has filed a freedom of information complaint seeking the report. According to a document obtained by the current under a freedom of information request. Move to February 12, 2012. Cell block hazards remain at jail, second inmate hanging averted. Again in the story, police records obtained through a freedom of information request show that despite a camera system and a police matron who was on duty, the prisoner was able to begin hanging herself with a homemade noose. Officers were able to cut her free, but only after being alerted by a bail commissioner who happened to be walking through the cell block and noticed her hanging. Current would not have had that story but for making and pursuing a freedom of information request under state law. May 3, 2012, former squad leader chided, report cites misuse of position. And the story begins, a police sergeant who ran a special unit to stop underage drinking near Central Connecticut State University has been reprimanded after trying to intervene on behalf of a female student who was charged with underage drinking. The city released a heavily redacted version of the report Wednesday in response to freedom of information requests by the current and other media. A few days later, May 10, 2012, police chief hit with fifth lawsuit. Officer sues Gagliardi and City for racial discrimination, adding to the department's turmoil. And in this story, too, two other recent troubles for Gagliardi's administration involved discipline against sergeants who tested for promotion. Both cases came to light last week through freedom of information requests by the press. May 19, police leadership may change soon. Chief William Gagliardi says, quote, some of the command staff will be moving on, quite frankly. I love that headline in subhead. <laughs> quite frankly. The city this spring is fighting multiple freedom of information cases to block access to investigations into misconduct and an alcohol-fueled confrontation at an off-duty party of several officers. And it goes on, in response to a freedom of information request for exit interview forms or notes over the past three years, a city attorney, attorney wrote, quote, I have been advised by Chief Gagliardi that no tapes, recordings, or written reports exist. You know, these stories only happen because you go after them. The amount of hard work and persistence, and it's boring, and it's hard, and it's scut work, and it requires that you do it, and you go after it, and you don't ever take no for an answer. And that's where great stories like this come from. May 22nd. Police chief calling it quits. Retirement likely to meet halts, mean wholesale changes in the beleaguered force. And again, Wardwell, in contrast, relentlessly pursued a serious misconduct investigation last summer that led to the retirement of 41-year-old Captain Anthony Paventi, who had been seen as a rising star. The city is still fighting to keep secret exactly what Wardwell found out. The current is pursuing the freedom of information case to release the two inch thick report that he wrote. June 2nd, Southington ends probe into theft. City owned item was sold on eBay by New Britain police chief's son. Again, documents obtained by the current through FOI requests show the theft was only the latest disciplinary issue involving the son, Gagliardi Jr., who has clashed with supervisors before. July 25, report blasts retired cop. Captain had sex at Berlin motels on duty. 
in the piece according to a police department internal investigation released Tuesday afternoon. The current has been pursuing a freedom of information complaint to obtain the report since December and won a preliminary decision earlier this month. Go after it, tell the people you're going after it, don't take no for an answer. The city has fought since late, late December to keep the police internal affairs report into Preventi hidden. And it is paying attorneys with the Kane and Escalera and McHale firm $250 an hour to oppose the current Freedom of Information Act request for it. Uh, and on behalf of all the journalists here, I can say that that's absolutely a horrible misuse of taxpayers' money to be paying that law firm $250 an hour. And on behalf of all the lawyers here, I can say they weren't charging nearly enough. <laughs> Embattled police sergeant retires. City attorneys this week said they're reviewing the investigative files to determine what they'll release in response to the current Freedom of Information request for them. It goes on and on and on, and it's still continuing today. We had hoped that we would have Don Stakem here uh, to accept this award. Um, he seems to have decided he has other priorities. He is, I'm told, right now on a boat in the middle of the Caribbean celebrating his wife's 50th birthday. Is away for all of April on a wonderful trip um, and so could not make it up here. But uh, luckily, we have the investigations editor of the Hartford Current here to accept the award on his behalf, John Ferraro. I'll be bit, uh, very brief. As you can tell, Don is uh, definitely deserving of this vacation. He did an incredible job. The, the one thing I could tell you, and that really comes through, I think, in the coverage, is how, is how relentless Don is. And um, I, while other reporters and, and uh, other newspapers might have uh, taken a pass about halfway through uh, this kind of thing, uh, Don kept going. And, and it really, really um, shows, I think, in the, in the coverage, as I think a lot of folks in this room know uh, public agencies um, really oftentimes rely on uh, the media and the public to give up. You know, we'll file requests and um, they'll delay. And certainly in Connecticut, we have a real strong FOI law, but um, they have a lot of time to respond, really. And they can drag things out for an awfully long time. And, and it's really Don Statham's, to Don Statham's credit that he continued to pursue this and didn't let it drop. And there were times when I think he came to his editors and we started thinking, oh boy, there's another story you want to pursue and another case that you want to pursue and another hearing you know, that you want to go to. It's an awful lot of time. But every single time he delivered a great story. And, and as, you could, as you could tell, it was an incredible public service. It, it really was. So on his behalf, I thank you very much. Thank you.